welcome to another fantastic episode of WTV. I'm Corey. And I'm Erin. With the recent incidents here at Westside, school safety has been on the minds of many staff and students. Danilo and Cassie investigate. On Friday, September 21st, a Westside High School student brought two guns to school in his backpack. Luckily, they were never used. On Monday, September 24th, the student admitted to bringing the guns and disciplinary actions have been taken. Now more than ever, school safety is on everyone's mind, and Principal Marianne Ricketts says that students play an important role in keeping our school safe. Students are our best defense against um, anything happening in this building. I think our students know the difference between, you know, right and wrong. Westside High School has been updating its security measures before this incident occurred and will continue to do so. Assistant Principal of Westside High School, Dr. Jeff Wagner, talks about the security measures we currently have in place. We have a lot of procedures in place and, and a lot of it starts with just protocol and a plan. Uh, so we have plans to identify uh, inside emergencies, fire drills, tornado drills, uh, chemical spills, uh, intruders, bomb threat. I mean there's a lot of different protocols that we have. Most importantly, the safety of our school affects the students inside of it. So let's see what some students think. Most of the time I feel pretty safe except for um, I think that there's problems with more like specifically the landing. The tornado drill and the inside emergency and everything, they have um, situations set up to where you know where to go and they're all around the schools. While certain security measures like inside emergency drills may seem like a hassle, they are truly there for the student's protection in case a serious threat may arise. For WTV, this has been Cassie and Danello. Thanks Danilo and Cassie. The Gay Straight Alliance has had a larger impact here at Westside. Anna has more. According to YourOutsource.org, more than 64% of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender students say they feel unsafe at school because of their sexual orientation. Amy Rector, the co-sponsor of the GSA or Gay Straight Alliance, discusses the role this club plays. Be a safe place for students to come and learn and talk about themselves and talk about issues at Westside and not feel like they're being judged there. And then the second role is really that it plays is for everybody else in the school to be, uh, to act as educators about those LGBT issues. Senior Jordan Brown, a member of the GSA Council, discusses the role it has played during high school. Me realize that I'm not normal, but being in high school has helped it a lot. If not, I would be super duper sad and stuff. But like. I come to school and I meet people through GSA and through school and they I talk to them and they're really cool and they make me understand myself a lot better. Senior Amanda Miller has also been involved in GSA throughout her high school career. It helped me as a person be comfortable with who I am and know safe places in this school as well. Sometimes when you can just sit in a room and be with people who you know won't go out of their way to bully you or bring it up later when you don't want people to know about certain things you may say in club. Mm -hmm. It's just a good place to be. For WTV, this has been Anna. Now Erin tells us an inspiring story of an eight-year-old boy defying all odds. Let's say that someone called me small and I don't care. Amir Mobali works at Swimtastic and teaches swim lessons. One of the kids who he teaches is Ajay Kalra who is your typical eight-year-old boy who would rather be swimming than giving an interview. Do you think it gives you a lot of perks, like advantages at all? Mm hmm But Kalra has a disability where he was born without a femur or a knee. All he has is the tibia bone. He amazes Mobali weekly with how happy he always is and how he pushes himself at swimming, even with his disability. Ajay is a really inspirational characteristic, I think. He's the type of kid that really doesn't seem like he has one of those sad sides or a mad side. He's always happy, he's always energetic, and I can truly say he's one of my favorite kids, and I, I, I always look forward to teaching him, and I can truly say I love him. Ajay is eight, and he loves swimming. He doesn't see his disability as a problem. That's how gone maybe. He's gone through many surgeries because of his legs, but still has many limitations. I wish I could get these. Mobale and Cholera have a strong connection. He never fails to inspire or put a smile on Mobale's face. When I saw him, I felt pretty moved by how well he's driven and how great he swims and how he never gives up and tries to his fullest potential. And I can say that the bond that we had the first time I taught him was just something that I haven't felt with any of my other kids. And 
He's like a brother to me. Although he's faced with so many struggles, Audrey always has a smile on his face and tries everything. Uh, even though I'm a lot older than he is, he's taught me a lot of things with his age and with his disability. He's taught me to never give up on my dreams and to always keep on pushing. For WTV, this has been Aaron. The summer heat has taken a toll on farmers all across the Midwest. Sydney tells us how the drought has affected everyone. During the summer of 2011, many residents of Nebraska were devastated with extreme amounts of flooding. However, this year it is completely the opposite. Throughout the Midwest, many people are in the middle of a severe drought. John Wolvard, a farmer from Waterloo, Nebraska, is one of those affected. The greatest strain it has put on the livestock producers, um, shortages of hay, um, increased prices for the grains to feed out the livestock. The drought is causing corn, soybean, and hay prices to go up almost 30% per bushel. Todd Swanson, a farmer from Wahoo, Nebraska, explains why this might cause problems within urban areas. Corn price is going to go up to ration demand, so people aren't feeding as many cattle. So when the price goes up, the people slow down feeding the cattle, so then the meat price will probably go up because there'll be less cows to, uh, for butcher and stuff like that for people to eat. Due to rising prices, farmers are having to give their livestock away because they can't afford to feed them. The result is a shortage of meat, which means higher prices for the consumer. Wolvert explains how you might also see the prices raise at the gas station. Our, our ethanol is 10% of our gasoline supply, then you'd have to say we've, we've added 10% of our refining capacity. So if you pulled ethanol completely off the shelf, then the um, oil prices would go way up. Although consumers may not directly see the troubles the drought is causing, they are able to see the effects in the supermarket and gas station. For WTV, this has been Sydney. At Westside, it's normally the athletes who get recognized, but Grace tells the story of some unsung heroes of Westside athletics. Every day after school, student athletes crowd into the athletic training room to have their ankles wrapped, shoulders iced, and more. Sean Campbell is the athletic trainer at Westside and has many responsibilities. Being an athletic trainer covers a lot of different things, um, but mostly it it's deals with uh, kind of the medical aspects and the health of the, of the athletes. Senior Kate Durst was asked to be an athletic trainer her sophomore year after taking the class Intro to Health Sciences. Release. Uh, Mr. Campbell actually asked me my end of my sophomore year if I wanted to be an athletic trainer for the following football season and I thought it would be a great opportunity to start learning different types of medicine and what I could possibly be interested in. So I took the opportunity and started showing up every day for practice. <laughs> I love athletic training. It's a um, great time. You not only get to meet with uh, just kids who are interested in athletics, but you really get to like bond with a lot of the athletes. They become almost like family. <laughs> athletic trainers dedicate a lot of time to their jobs taking care of athletes long after practice is over. Durst has enjoyed all the time she has spent with the athletes and plans to go into medicine in college. For WTV, this has been Grace. Thanks, Grace. There's a unique scholarship opportunity given to a member of the football team. But it's not your typical recruiting story. Here's Corey with more. The dream of being a part of a football team beyond high school is shared by many players all across the country. For some, the dream stops after high school. But in Reese Baumgartner's case, the story has only just begun. After never even being on the team as a football player, Baumgartner joined the team his junior year as a team manager. Earlier this year, Baumgartner was offered an official scholarship to be the team manager of the Iowa Western Community College football team. Coach Glenn from Iowa Western came to talk to us about character development with social media. And after he came up to me and asked, uh, would I like to do something like this at Iowa Western? And I said, sure. So he uh, gave me a tour of all the facilities and all that, and then the coaches offered me everything right then and then. After two years, Baumgartner can choose which university he would like to attend and be their team manager for football. First it starts here with Westside, and then I go to Iowa Western next year, and if I do everything right there, they said they'll try to hook me up, and then it's just me working hard. Assistant varsity football coach Justin Haberman stresses the importance of having good team managers and has high hopes for Reese's future. It was a huge help to know as a coach that if you told them that you needed a certain cones or a certain amount of footballs or something set out, that it was there when you got there to start your drill. Reese is the kind of guy that I could see him uh, getting, because he enjoys doing it so much, he enjoys being around the sports programs. I could see Reese someday doing this for a major football program, whether it's a major college 
or even at the pro level. For WTV, this has been Corey. The Westside Varsity football season was an exciting one to say the least. Sydney takes a look back. <laughs> Winning against Central, the first time we won the uh, opener game since we uh, went to the state title back in 2006. That was really big for us. We rebounded really quick when we lost, and uh, I think that all is accredited to how close we were to each other. So. Um, developing leaders, uh, guys stepping up, taking bigger roles. Uh, guys like Harrison Jordan, uh, Corey Kerfman, um, Drew Fitzmorris, uh, Adam Frank, they all stepped up as leaders on this team and really uh, worked extremely hard and, and, and guided our team to having a successful season we had. I was really proud of the Millard South game. We were uh, going in underdogs and uh, we beat the number two team in the state at that time and uh, it was just a really proud moment. And I've never beaten them in high school, so it was really awesome. The Miller South game, uh, I think our kids uh, worked extremely hard uh, going into that week like they did every week, but uh, uh, executed the game plan um, to, to perfection. A group of players that, that, that um, put everything behind them and, and, and came to work and, and do the things that we asked them to do and, and prepare themselves to, to go out there and, and be the best possible team we could. You know, I, I'm, the thing is going through, we had a, a tremendous group of young men that worked extremely hard um, that we're very proud of. And, and uh, you know, just really thank those seniors for the leadership they, they've given us over the last four years and the, and the tremendous amount of effort and look forward to the next season. What do you want? From the quirky to the serious, Maddie finds out. How long do I have to think about this? From what? 
What do I want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do I want? Yeah. In life? Right now, I would like... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, the question is, what do you want? Wait, what do I want? Out of what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you want? Flying cars? I want a horse. I want a new horse. I would like a million dollars. Um, I want a new job. Um, a home in Mexico. Well, I want to uh, spend a nice weekend with my brother Nelly uh, when he comes back from college. Yeah, that'd be nice. Today, I'd like to take a nap. And a live-in maid to make me dinner and to pack my lunch for school and to clean my house and take care of my kids. Oh, I want to be like a game inventor. <laughs> like, no, yeah. Uh, I just like playing video games. Better food. What I want is when I to graduate from high school and to go to college and just yeah I mean yeah it's like <laughs> I, I've never really been asked what I want before. I guess what I want is just to have a great time in high school since I'm just a freshman and to get good grades and to just make new friends and have fun. Um, I want to go to a good college next year and enjoy my time after high school. Um, I want, I just want school to be over with today. I want people to be friendly. There we go. <laughs> I guess I want the wars to end, like Maybe not the troops to come out, but like just stopping the fighting. After high school, I'd like to get a job at NASA. Um, I think what I want, um, for everybody to have fun, I guess, and get along. Not, no bullying and stuff, no. It's a lot of that going on these days. But that's all I want. What do I want? As cheesy as it sounds, because it is pretty cheesy, I want um, world peace. I don't. I guess um, world peace. I'm not a, in a beauty pageant, so it actually means something. <laughs> Gosh. Um. Probably right now, more than anything, I just want like a healthy, happy child. To be a school teacher after high school. Thanks for watching this episode of WTV. Be sure to check out our show on westsidewire.org or as a podcast on iTunes.